Today we're going to be demonstrating a skull x-ray. The routine views for skull will be towns, AP or PA, and both laterals. Uh, easy way to try to remember this, what we try to tell you is remember tall. Towns for the T, AP, PA for the, uh, for the AP or lateral, or, or AP or the PA, and then both laterals uh, are the two L's. So easy way just to try to remember it. Now first view we're going to demonstrate is going to be the towns view. Okay, the towns view we're going to use a 10 by 12 lengthwise. I've got my right marker on here. Uh, what we are going to have to do but with the patient, what we do on head work, is we do use a full body shield. On the patient. Okay, so we're going to use the full body shield and then as far as uh, what we need to do is for the head work itself, we need to angle, if the patient is able to get the OML perpendicular to the IR, then we angle 30 degrees. If the patient is unable to do that, then we're going to use the IOML and we'll increase our angle 7 degrees to 37 degrees. So I'm going to try to get the patient's head straight. I'm going to have her tuck your chin down. I'm going to look at the, uh, the OML, the orbital medial line, and she's able to get it perpendicular. So once it's perpendicular to the IR, then we're ready to center. Now our centering for this, I've already got our tube angle 30 degrees centered to our film. I'm going to center about two and a half inches above the gabor. I'm going to have to move it just a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to center gabelles about here. We're going to center about two and a half inches above that, which is about the level of the, ha the hair. Even go more. Thought I thought, sorry. Okay. So it's about the level of the hairline. Then we're going to collimate in to the skin margins, side to side. And at the top, I just want to make sure I've got to the top of the head here. Okay. The technique for this is going to be 81 kV center cell. And what we're hoping to see on this, we should see the occipital bone. Now you should see the dorsum cells should be portrayed within the foramen magnum. That would indicate that you have good positioning. So this is our uh, town's view for the skull. Now the next view we're going to actually do is going to be the AP. So you're going to take the angle off. I'm going to recenter. I'm going to go ahead and center my phone back to my bucky here. And make sure I'm center locked. Okay, still going to be using an, uh, my right marker. Now the position of the patient is still going to be, we're going to have the patient, it's not rotated. We're going to make sure that the patient's in an AP position, that the OML, again this orbital medial line, is perpendicular, making sure the head's straight, still perpendicular to the IR. And if it is, then we can go ahead and start our centering. The centering is going to be, we're going to center, I can tell you I'm not high enough. Okay, so we're going to center at the level of the gobelba, the gobelba, the gobelba, and then we're going to center to MSP. Our collimation is going to again be to just to make sure we get to the top of the head. We also can palpate the base of the skull, make sure we got it all on there. Now our area of interest on the AP or PA, which I'm going to demonstrate next, is going to be the frontal bone. I'm going to put the marker up here just verifying that I do have the right marker on there and it's marked the correct side. Now some of the things about this our technique first of all will be about 77 kV center cell. Now the, the way, reason we prefer this being done PA over the AP view uh, is going to be because there's less radiation to the orbits uh, to, or the eyes and also to the thyroid. Also is magnification of the frontal bone because that is our area of interest and if we have it further away from the IR it's going to be magnified. But this is a lot of times easier for the patient and it's actually probably easier for us to actually uh, do it this way also. So next what we're going to do is going to show you the demonstrate the PA view. So if you'll roll over onto your stomach for me. Again, we're going to have her to put her forehead on the table. We're going to make sure, and we'll verify first off that everything, her head is straight. And then again, we're going to use the orbital meatal line between the EAM and here, which looks 
pretty, pretty straight again. Okay. Then our centering is going to be, instead of entering at the level of the gobella, we're actually going to exit at the level of the gobella. So what I want to use is an ink pen. And I'm just going to take and mark where that's at. Open up my collimation just a little bit. You just scoot down just a little. There we go. Just make sure everything's straight. Okay. So then I'm just going to take and put. Uh, I still got it too much. I'm going to have to do it again. See, guys, it even happens to me. Okay. I'm just trying to get my centering line on my ink pen. That shows I'm at the level of the gobella. I've recentered to my film. Now we're going to have to use either a right or left marker, whichever side you want to mark is, is fine. Collimation should be the top of her head, which it is, and to the same margin side to side. Now her right is now over here, so I'm just moving my right marker to this side, or again, you could have used your left marker over here, it would be fine. I am going to make sure that I move the marker out. And again, this is the way we prefer that it be done, uh, a PA view. Uh, it's going to be uh, less radiation again to the eyes, and also it's going to be less magnified because now the frontal bone is closer to the IR. So this is our PA or AP skull. Okay, and then we're going to have the patient just turn now to your, put your right side against there. And our technique for those, uh, I'm not sure, but I thought I said it's going to be 77 kV for the PA and the AP. Now for our lateral, we're still going to use a 10 by 12. We're going to turn our film crosswise now. Our technique will be 70 to 73 kV, still center cell. Just going to center it up to my bucky. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I'm still center to it since I moved it down. And I turned my film from lengthwise to crosswise. I'm still going to make sure I'm center locked. Okay, so can you scoot down just a little bit so I don't have to do this again? There we go. So one, there are three things that we need to verify on a lateral. Okay, so we'll go through them one at a time so you can see. We need to make sure I'll say them, then I'm going to demonstrate them. The, the IPL needs to be perpendicular to the IR. The MSP should be parallel to the IR. And then the IOML should be perpendicular to the front edge of the film or to the, to the table, whichever one's easy for you to remember. So. We're going to take and verify, so I'm going to look at the IPL, and I'm going to rotate her head to one eye is right over top of the other. You can use your pen sort of as a guide. Then I'm going to make sure the MSP, and I sort of look at the middle of the chin, the nose, the forehead, and sort of run it, and that's going to make sure it should be actually parallel. Sometimes it's easier if you get down here and look at it sort of at an angle like that. So there are the MSP and the IPL. Then I want to take and do the IOML. So the OML is here. IOML is here. So I'm going to, this is going to be tucking the chin toward her chest just slightly. And that should take and get our head in a true lateral position. Now once we have the true lateral position, our centering is going to be about two inches superior to the EAM. So I'm going to go about two inches up from the, from the EAM. Now, on a real patient, the earrings would be gone. We also would remove any necklaces because those all can uh, obstruct anatomy. Then our collimations will be just to the top of the head. In front to back, we just need to verify that we have the entire frontal bone and to back to the occipital bone. As far as marker placement goes, this is a right lateral, so I'm going to put the marker more in the area of the face. We're not interested in the face on this view. We're looking at the skull. So putting the marker in the face would be acceptable, or you can actually put it right here in the film. Technique again for this is going to be 70 to 73 kV. Telling us that it's a good true lateral uh, on this, you would see the cella turcica and the clevis would be seen in profile. Now this looks at the parietal, it looks at the occipital, and it also shows the frontal bone. So this pretty gives a, gives a good representation of the entire skull. We also need to do our left lateral skull. So you're going to have the patient to roll to the left. Now sometimes you, on some patients, uh, especially larger patients, you may actually have to roll them up toward one side or the other, whichever side you're x-raying. 
that's not uncommon to have to do that so if you do don't worry about it that's what you're supposed to do because sometimes uh, the patient's not able to take and get flat unless you actually roll them onto their side so we're going to go through the progression again we're going to look at her head here i'm going to get the ipl perpendicular i need to look at the msp which is going to get her head up this way a little bit more okay and then i'm going to look at the ioml Okay, now once I have it in a good true lateral position, we're going to center again about two inches superior to the EAM. Okay, all right. And I'm going to put my left marker again down here in the facial area. I'm sure I got all the top there. I think I need a little bit more. There we go. Okay, and this will be our left lateral uh, skull position. Again, the clevis and the cell tertia should be seen in profile. The technique remains the same. 70 to 73 kV center cell. And these are our skull x-rays.